Welcome back to our course, Fundamentals of Operating Systems, based on the textbook Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Abraham Silbershots, Greg Gagney, and Peter Galvin, published by Wiley Publishing. We have just completed our discussion of CPU scheduling. Now we're going to start investigating the challenges of scheduling with multiple processors. So let's get started. Our discussion so far has focused on the problems of scheduling a CPU in a system with a single processing core. If multiple CPUs are available, load sharing, where multiple threads may run in parallel, becomes possible. However, scheduling issues become a whole lot more complex. Many possibilities have been tried. And as we saw with CPU scheduling on a single core CPU, there is no best solution. Traditionally, the term multiprocessor refers to systems that provided multiple physical processors, where each processor contained a single core CPU. However, as microcomputer technology has progressed, the definition of multiprocessor has evolved significantly, and on modern computer systems, multiprocessor now applies to the following system architectures. First, there's multi-core CPUs, and then there's multi-threaded cores, and then there's NUMA systems. NUMA stands for Non-Uniform Memory Access, and it's a computer memory design used in multiprocessing where the memory access time depends on the memory location relative to the processor. Under NUMA, a processor can access its own local memory faster than non-local memory. When I say non-local memory, I mean memory local to another processor or memory shared between processors. The benefits of NUMA are limited to particular workloads, notably on servers where the data is often associated strongly with certain tasks or users. And then the fourth architecture is heterogeneous multiprocessing. In the first three examples, we concentrate on systems on which the processes are identical or homogeneous in terms of their functionality. We can then use any available CPU to run any process in the queue. In the last example, heterogeneous multiprocessing, we explore a system where the processes are not identical in their capabilities. One approach to CPU scheduling in a multiprocessor system has all scheduling decisions, input-output processing, and other system activities handled by a single processor, the master server. The other processors execute only user code. This asymmetric multiprocessing, which some authors refer to as a master-slave configuration, is simple because only one core accesses the system data structures, reducing the need for data sharing. The downfall to this approach is the master server becomes a potential bottleneck where overall system performance may be reduced. Also, if the master fails, all other processors fail with it. The standard approach for supporting multiprocessors is symmetric multiprocessing where each processor is self-scheduling. This at least allows for a reduced risk of failure. Obviously, the chances of failure are less in this configuration. The scheduling proceeds by having the scheduler for each processor examine the thread queue and select the thread to run. Note that this provides two possible strategies for organizing the threads eligible to be scheduled. First is uh, that all threads may be in a common ready queue. And secondly, each processor may have its own private queue of threads. These two strategies are contrasted in this figure. If we select the first option, we have a possible conflict condition on the shared ready queue, and so it is necessary to ensure that two separate processors do not choose to schedule the same thread, and that the threads are not lost from the queue. We should use some form of locking to protect the common ready queue from this race condition. Locking would be difficult since all accesses to the queue would require lock ownership, and accessing the shared queue would likely be a performance bottleneck. 
We'll talk more about this in the next unit. The second option allows each processor to schedule threads from its private run queue and therefore does not suffer from the possible performance problems associated with a shared run queue. Because of this, it is the most common approach on system support and symmetric processing. Also, having private per processor run queues may lead to more efficient use of cache memory. There are issues with per processor run queues though. For example, workloads of varying sizes creating the potential for an inefficient use of cores. However, as we shall see, balance and algorithms can be used to equalize workloads among all processors. Virtually all modern operating systems support symmetric multiprocessing, including Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, as well as mobile systems, including Android and iOS. Well, there we go. We've been introduced to the issues involving multiple processors, sharing processes between multiple processors. And we've learned about asymmetric multiprocessing, for example, when we have a master-slave set up between our processors. And we've also learned about symmetric multiprocessing, where the processors themselves are able to share those processes. So let's stop here, take a break, go over your notes, and when you're ready, come on back and we will talk more about multi-core processors.